Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. One of those technologies is XML, Extensible Markup Language. You've probably heard of it or seen it. It looks like a do-it-yourself edition of HTML, the language web pages are made of. It's used all over the internet for moving data between systems and programs that normally don't interact. XML instruction is way beyond the scope of this video, and you don't really need to know it for what I'm going to show you. But if you want more info, there's lots of great resources like these right here on your screen. I've done a few videos showing new Excel functions to split up data that, as of this recording in September 2022, are still in beta, so they haven't been released yet. But what if you need to do it right now and you don't have a beta version of Excel? That's where the filter XML function comes to the rescue, if you're using the Windows version. Sorry, it isn't available for the Mac. I'm going to show you a use for filter XML that one of my clients showed me. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. One last thing before we start. You already have features available to split data as a one-shot method, like text-to-columns and flash fill. What I'm talking about here is doing it dynamically, on the fly, actively, with a function. So let's take a look and see how it works. This sheet is a typical list of contact information with names and addresses. We want to separate the list into the columns to the right. You can see we have columns labeled first name, last name, and so on. And we're going to do that to make this data usable. So let's talk about the syntax first before we do anything else. So the syntax of filter XML is simply equals filter XML, and it has two arguments, XML and XPath. Now, this syntax is deceptively simple. Sure, there's only two arguments, but there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack in these two. The XML is all of the data in each cell, and the XPath is the element that you're splitting with, the character. Now, right now, the pieces of data are separated with commas, which is pretty typical. It's what you would split with if you were using the text columns feature, for example. What we're going to do is we're going to turn those commas into XML tags to make this whole thing work. Now, let me make this more visual so it's easier to understand. So the basic structure of the XML is that each cell gets wrapped inside a parent element and each piece of data in the cell gets wrapped in a child element. You can call these elements anything you want. It doesn't matter. Just don't put a space in the name. So let's refer this to the syntax that I just showed you. The XML argument refers to the entire parent element and everything in it. The XPath argument refers to the name of the child element we're splitting the data with. The first thing we have to do is substitute the child element for the commas and the space after the commas. To keep it simple, I'm going to call the child elements item. Each item has to be wrapped inside an opening and closing item tag. Right after one closes, the next one opens. And I'm going to use the substitute function to do that. Before we go to it, let's take a quick review of the substitute function. So the substitute function will replace text based on content, and the syntax is fairly straightforward, equals substitute, and then we feed it three arguments. The first argument is what's the text or the cell we're going to affect. Second argument is what's the old text. Third argument is what's the new text. So for example, let's say in cell A4 we have uh, the text I want vanilla, and you want to substitute vanilla for chocolate. You say equals replace. Look at cell A4 find vanilla, replace vanilla with chocolate, and you get the result. So I'm going to type equals substitute. There it is. I type the first few letters and the function pops up, so I'm just going to hit the tab key. So the first argument is what's the text that we're going to affect. So that's cell A6. I'm going to click it. Okay, that's the first argument. Put in a comma to go to the second argument. The second argument is what's the old text we're looking for? Well, I can't just type it in. I have to put it in double quotes. So I'm going to open up the double quote. We are looking for a comma and a space. Close the quote. So that's the entire second argument. What are we looking for? Now I put in another comma. And don't get these two commas confused, right? The first comma is a comma and a space. That's the text we're looking for. This uh, next comma here 
uh, is separating one argument from the next. And the new text we are looking for, and I have to open up another set of quotes, right? Because the text we're putting in a function, I'm going to open up a bracket, forward slash. Remember I said I'm calling this item. I'm just inventing this. I could call this calico for all that matters. I could call it Siamese until I like cats. Close the bracket, open up another bracket, item, close the bracket, close the quote, close the parenthesis. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. And I'm going to press Control Enter. So I enter it and it stays in there. And you can see, all right, you know, this is working well, but it's not quite finished because we need to place the opening parent before the first name and we need to place the closing parent after the zip code. So for that, we're going to use concatenation, right? We're going to use the ampersand character, the ampersand symbol to stitch several pieces of text together. So I'm going to go and add to this. I can double click in here. I can double click in the cell. Or I could click up here. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to now put in the filter XML uh, function. So the first long part of it that we're going to put in is the XML itself. And we're actually in this uh, formula. We're going to feed it new XML to replace inside the formula. It seems crazy. It seems like cheating, but it's totally okay. So we're going to say equals filter XML, open up the parenthesis. And the first argument there is we don't have to put this into the quotes. Remember I said the parent element I'm calling everything, literally the word everything. So in quotes, open up the bracket, everything. Close that bracket. Now remember the uh, child is element, so open up the next bracket. Item, close that. Close the quote. And we've got that substitute function, right? And we're going to concatenate it. So I'm going to use the ampersand. And it does not matter if I put spaces on either sides of this ampersand. It's all couldn't care less either way. So here's the whole substitute function that we've got. And now I'm going to put in another ampersand. Maybe I'll put a space just to make it a little easier to read. And now I'm going to open up another set of quotes. And I'm going to put in the closing item tag and the closing everything tag. Close that. Close the double quotes. So this whole long thing is the XML. Right? We saw that in the uh, PowerPoint slide. Comma, now the second argument of filter XML, remember we said that is the XML itself. What is the thing we're substituting? Well, that's item, right? We have that in there. So again, open up a set of double quotes. Two forward slashes, item, and close the quotation mark. Close the parenthesis. Notice I'm not putting slash slash item in brackets because this is not a an element that it's looking for. We're simply telling it what the element is being converted to. Okay, so let's enter that. I'll press Control Enter. And okay, so this is great. It found the XML and the XML substitution were great. It found each piece of data. All the data substituted by commas, but this is going down a column. That's not what we want. We want this going across the row. So I'm going to stuff the whole formula inside the transpose function. And the transpose function turns a column into a row or a row into a column. So let's go up here. And I'll just click on the formula bar. And after the equal sign, before the filter XML, I put in the transpose function. And there it is. It's just coming right up. So I could just hit the tab key. So I've got that whole filter XML, blah, blah, blah. Now there's the parenthesis that I'm putting in for the transpose function. I leave all the rest of it alone. I go to the end and I put one more closing parenthesis that closes the transpose function. And now I can hit enter. And there it is. Now let's go take it and autofill it.
And there we go. Just going to press control up arrow so we go up to the top. Pretty cool, huh? So yes, this is complicated. When my client showed it to me, I had to play with it and dissect it a bit to fully understand what was going on. So you might want to do the same. And the heck of it is, once Microsoft releases the text split function from beta and you have it available, it'll be much easier and you won't have to use this crazy technique anymore. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between Sheets. <laughs>